Well, good morning, Rediscover Church. What a wonderful privilege it is for me to step in and bring the word today. You know, if we haven't met, my name's Duncan. I'm the senior pastor across at Coventry Elim and also a member of Elim's national leadership team. And myself and my wife, Helen, for many, many years, we've been really good friends with Mark and Nita. We believe that they're fantastic leaders, a wonderful couple. And at least for me today, it's a great opportunity and a real privilege just to step in for Mark and to bring the word. You know, in Coventry, we absolutely love watching everything that's happening across in Exeter. We're inspired by your church. We love your church. Sometimes we watch from a distance, sometimes a little more up close and personal, and we love what you're doing. There's many great connections that we have in Coventry with your great team. You, you have a wonderful staff team. We love you guys. And uh, even though we're a couple of hundred miles away, you should know that we're cheering you on, and we're believing that the year that lies ahead of you will be a fantastic year, even though, of course, he's had somewhat of an unusual start. You know, like uh, maybe many of you, or at least some of you watching online, I personally grew up in a Christian family. I grew up in a family where we went to church every Sunday, uh, a family where we were encouraged to pray, uh, a family where we were encouraged to really trust in the Lord's provision. My guess is that you maybe grew up in a similar kind of family, but unlike maybe some families, at least our family, we didn't do that thing that some Christian families do where they put a Bible verse on pretty much everything that moves in their house. You, you know the families that do that. They uh, take a Bible verse, they take a promise, and they attach it to everything that moves and everything that doesn't move in their house. And they put bumper stickers on their cars, you know, honk if you love Jesus, text if you want to see him right now. Uh, they're the kind of family who maybe have 25 fridge magnets, you know, and on every fridge magnet, which is attached to the fridge, because that's what you do with a fridge magnet. They put things like, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. Nothing shall separate me from the love of God, that kind of thing. You know the, the Christian families who have posters and ornaments and pictures, and they put the promises of God and the Word of God so that anybody who comes into their home can see what is really important to them. You know, if that's the kind of thing that you do in your home, I should say, firstly, great job. I'm cheering you on. It's just not the kind of thing that we did in the home that I grew up in. Uh, in the home that I grew up in, there was just one Bible verse on our wall. I can even picture it now. It was etched into a piece of wood, and it was placed above the settee in our lounge, and it was there throughout the entirety of my childhood. And it just had one verse on it. It was from Psalm 46 and verse 10, and it said, Be still and know that I am God. And I don't know about you, but I personally love that verse. I love that verse because it reminds me that when the world is doing all crazy kinds of things, it's really important to be still and to be aware of God's presence with you. Be still and know that I am God. But I don't know about you, but when I look back and think about those words on my wall as a child, I often used to think, why is it that we don't put the rest of the psalm on the wall? If you happen to have Psalm 46 in front of you, you'll notice that it paints a picture of a world in turmoil. There's a picture there of a, a world experiencing earthquakes and natural disasters and political unrest and unrestrained violence and great nations falling apart. Of course, we don't put that stuff on our walls. Uh, we tend to describe the stillness. Uh, we don't maybe talk so much about the storm. And I think sometimes we do that kind of thing with the words of Jesus. We put on our fridge magnets, come to me, all you who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest. I have come that you may have life and life in all its fullness. We tend to put those words of Jesus on our walls. But there are some words of Jesus, of course, that we ignore. Follow me and let the dead bury their own dead. And of course, those are words of Jesus. It's just that we tend not to like them or even quote them. So how about these seven words? Seven words that probably could have been our theme or our motto for last year, for 2020. Jesus said, in this world... 
you will have trouble. In John 16, 33, Jesus gathers his disciples around him and he looks them in the eye and he tells them the truth of what life is going to be like for them as they follow him. Without sugarcoating it in any way, he says to them, in this world, you will have trouble. And it makes me wonder whether that actually should have been the theme for every single church in 2020. At the start of 2020, most leaders I know said that this was going to be a year for 2020 vision. This was a, a year that was going to be a year of momentum, a year of movement. This was a year to take new ground. This was a year for 2020 vision. I know that at the start of last year, I said that kind of thing. And because Mark, I know, is like a fantastic, high-quality leader, in fact, one of the best leaders I know, I guess that Mark probably said that kind of thing to your church. This is a year for momentum and movement and taking new ground because it's a 2020 year. But maybe we should have called it a John 16, 33 year. Because as we look back over the last year, there's been a whole load of trouble, hasn't there? Most of us have never known a year like it in the entirety of our lives. A global pandemic, racial injustice, financial insecurity, Brexit, increasing unemployment, sadness, sorrow, loss, illness, pretty much everywhere. For some of you, as you look back over the last maybe 9, 10, 11 months... It's been almost the hardest period of your life. Maybe you've never felt so alone. Maybe you've never felt so afraid. Maybe you've never felt so sad. Maybe it's been like the words of Jesus have come to pass for you. In this world, you will have trouble. And while I guess the first half of this short talk sounds incredibly depressing... And maybe some of you are now thinking, I wish Mark or Nigel or Sean was speaking. I feel like it's really important that we understand that the Bible never pretends that life is going to be easy. In fact, so often the Bible tells us that there will be times of trouble. In fact, one of the reasons why I trust in the authority and the integrity of the Bible is that it never pretends that life is always going to be this bed of roses and life will be easy. In fact, it says and makes it clear to us that we should expect to experience trouble. But of course, you'll be pleased to know but that's not the only thing that the Bible teaches us. You'll be glad to know that the Bible doesn't stop there. And so a couple of chapters before John 16, of course, is John chapter 14. In John chapter 14, Jesus talks to his own disciples about his death. He explains to them that they're going to uh, see something terrible happen to him. They're going to see him betrayed. They're going to see him tortured. They're going to see him beaten. They're going to see him executed. He explains to his followers that the things that he's about to experience is possible that they will experience. Jesus says to his guys, you know, I am going to leave you. I'm, I'm going to be leaving you alone. Jesus looks his disciples in the eye and he says to them, you know, guys, there is trouble coming. And then it's like he pulls them a little closer and he looks them square in the eye and he says to them, do not let your hearts be troubled. In other words, don't let the trouble in the world that surrounds you get on the inside of you. Don't allow the trouble in the world to create a trouble in your hearts. To which I'm sure the disciples probably thought, how on earth are we going to do that? I mean, Jesus, haven't you seen that there's a load of trouble in this world? Haven't you seen that there's crazy things happening all around us? How on earth is it that I can avoid fear and anxiety and trouble making its way from the world around me into my inner world, into my heart? Jesus gathers his guys a little closer. He puts his arms on their shoulders and he says to them, peace, 
Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. Jesus says, my peace I give you. This is not any old peace. This is not worldly peace. This is Jesus' peace. It's the kind of peace that can sleep through a storm. It's the kind of peace that can speak to the wind and the waves and tell them to be still. This isn't temporary peace. This is perfect peace. This is Jesus' peace. He says, my peace I give to you. It means that you can have trouble on the outside, but you can have peace on the inside. It means that you can have brokenness and turmoil on the outside, but you can have wholeness and stillness on the inside. My peace I give you, Jesus says. I don't know about you, but I will never forget the 16th of March last year. I would imagine that you had a similar experience to me. I would imagine Mark and Nita and maybe your leadership team here uh, had a similar kind of experience to me as well. I sat down and listened to our prime minister. He explained that we were about to go into a lockdown He explained what that meant, and at the end of his talk, I phoned our church leaders. And as we uh, came into a discussion about what that meant for our church, we cancelled everything. We cancelled everything that we loved, everything that we knew how to do. We cancelled Sundays, we cancelled prayer meetings, we cancelled youth ministry, we cancelled pretty much everything that we knew how to do to do. And then I removed a whole load of stuff from my diary. I removed long anticipated events. I removed conferences. I removed my holiday. I I like, I cancelled everything. It almost felt like I cancelled my life. Uh, I cancelled everything I knew how to do and felt almost uncertain about what to do. And in that moment, I did something that I've done pretty much every day since the 16th of March. I sat down on my sofa in my lounge, and in the stillness of that moment, I opened my hands to God, and I talked to him about all the things that were troubling my mind. I chose in that moment to believe that he was greater and is greater than my greatest fears, that he is greater than my greatest troubles. And in that moment, I chose to fix my thoughts and my attention on the presence of God with me, and I chose to receive his peace. And all I can say is in that moment, I received almost a supernatural a peace, a peace maybe that I can't describe, but even though I can't describe it, it was real nonetheless. One thing I know about Rediscover Church is that you guys have rediscovered the importance of daily rhythms. Uh, we might talk about them in terms of healthy habits, those things that shape our hearts. You know, in recent years, I made that kind of discovery. I discovered that I become what I repeat. And I know that to be true in the physical. Uh, If I have the habit of eating beef burgers or lettuce leaves, uh, that's going to shape the kind of person I become physically because I become what I repeat. I know the same is true spiritually. It's true that the rhythms and the routines that I choose, whether I adopt them accidentally or intentionally, they have a profound impact upon the kind of person that I become. They change and shape my inner world. They shape my heart. That's why since the 16th of March, I pause pretty much every day, find a place of stillness. I open my hands to God and receive his peace. I say, God, this trouble around me is not going to get on the inside of me. There may be trouble in the world, but I'm not going to allow trouble to invade my heart. 
So I open my hands to the presence of God and I ask to receive his peace. And you know, as I conclude this talk, that's exactly what I would love us to do, each one of us, whenever or wherever you're watching this talk, I would love you, apart from if you're driving, to open your hands and to close your eyes and to invite an experience of the presence of God and the peace of God into your hearts. And so would you do that with me for a moment? Wherever you are, would you open your hands to God? Maybe close your eyes and pray with me. And as you pray, would you take a moment just to speak to the Lord about the things that are troubling you? The things that are going on around you in your world, that are creating anxiety and fear around you. Would you talk to the Lord about those things? For some, it may be fear about a lack of finances. For some, it may be anxiety around ill health. For some, it may be concern about a family member or a friend. Would you just take a moment to talk to the Lord about that situation? And then would you take a moment to receive his peace? It may be that it's helpful just to take a few deep breaths. And as you take those deep breaths, it may be, That it's a very simple way of you saying to the Lord, Lord, I need to receive your peace. Would you do that just for a moment? Would you hear the words of Jesus spoken to you? Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Do not be afraid. Lord Jesus, we are so grateful that you tell us how it really is. Lord Jesus, we're so grateful that you don't pretend that the moment that we follow you, all of a sudden life is going to be incredibly easy. You tell us the truth. You let us know that there will be trouble in the world around us. But we're so grateful from your word that you say to us that that trouble does not have to get on the inside of us. And so in this moment, we invite your peace. Lord Jesus, fill our hearts with that supernatural, unexplainable peace. We ask that you would do that right now. And for Rediscover Church, I pray that the God of hope will fill you with all joy and peace as you trust in him so that you may overflow with hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, both now and evermore. And everybody says, Amen. Amen. God bless you. Have a great rest of your day. It's been a privilege to be able to share with you today. God bless you.